In this video, I'm going to show you my top 5 most useful tools in Excel that every data analyst should know how to use. And make sure to stick to the last one because the last tool is something that isn't as well known as the other 4 tools. The first one is called Flash Fill and this one's pretty well known across most analysts because it saves you so much time when you're entering in your own data. Over here, I have a simple example where I'm trying to get the last 3 digits of all of these product codes. So technically, I could just manually type in each of the rows over here, but there's a much quicker way to do this. I'm just gonna type in the last three digits for the first two rows. So I'm gonna say 200, 201, and then go to the next cell. And Excel's gonna know that I'm trying to get the last three digits. It's gonna notice like the pattern. So all I have to do is do Control E, and it's gonna automatically fill up the rest of the rows for me so it's really quick and easy to use the second tool is called function arguments so if i'm using a formula and i forget what i need to put inside the formula then this tool is going to be really useful for me so let's say that i want to get the last name of the person who has the first name of joe so i'm just going to use a vlookup function for that so i'm going to say equals vlookup and then let's say i forget what i need to put inside this formula so the useful tool is called function arguments and that's right next to this formula bar over here. So if I click on this button, it's going to pop open the function arguments window. And for each argument that I need to put in for the formula, it's going to give me a brief description over here, which is going to be really useful for me. So the first argument is going to be the look of value. And so it says that it's going to be the value that I'm looking for in the first column of the table so i'm gonna say that we're looking for c12 which is the first name of joe and then in the table array it's going to contain the all the data but we need to make sure that the first column in the table array includes the lookup value so i'm gonna say c11 to f15 i'm just gonna highlight that and then for the third argument and it's gonna be the index number of the column. And so you gotta be careful here. It's not the it's not the column number of the whole table, it's the column number of the table array, which is what you put in the second argument. So in the second argument, I, I said that the it starts from C11, which is over here to F15. So that means that the column C is gonna be index of one, and then the column after that, which is column D, is gonna be index number two and so that's why the column index number is going to be two because we're looking for the last name in this example so that's pretty much all the range lookup is an optional argument so i'm not going to worry about that in this video so i'm just click on okay and so it gives me the last name of the person who has the first name of joe which is pretty cool and this was all thanks to the help of the function arguments window here because it told me what the description was for each argument. Third tool is called data analysis, and this is gonna be really useful when you're dealing with numerical values. If I go to the data ribbon and then click on data analysis over here, which is in the top right hand corner, click on that, then it's gonna show me a bunch of statistical tools for numerical values. And if you're familiar with statistics, then you might be you might recognize some of these tools that I'm that are appearing right now. But in this video, I'm just going to go with the simple one, which is called Descriptive Statistics. And I'm going to click on OK. You could explore the other ones in your own time, though. But anyways, I'm just going to go with this one and then say for the input range, I'm going to put in the sales column, which is column L. So I'm going to start off by clicking on L2. And then I'm going to do Control Shift Down arrow key, which is going to get the whole column. And so it's grouped by the column, so I'm going to leave that as is. And I'm going to say that there's labels in the first row. Or actually, no, in this case, I'm not going to check that because I said that in this input range, I started off with the the value. I didn't include the column name in the, the input range, so I'm not going to actually check that. And so for the output range, or actually, I'm not going to do output range. I'm going to say the new worksheet because I want to put this, the descriptive statistics in a new worksheet. And so I can name it whatever I want. So I'm just going to call it descriptive sales stats. And then I want to display the summary statistics. And then I click on OK. 
and it's going to take me to this new window or a new worksheet and then if I zoom in it's going to show me the bunch of statistical values like the mean, median mode, standard deviation and all that useful stuff that could be useful when you're doing some analysis on your data set. The fourth tool is called quick analysis and this is basically lets you do a bunch of cool stuff with only one click. Alright so over here I have the same data set as before but I'm gonna do some conditional formatting for the the sales column. I want to get the sales that are higher in green but the sales that are lower in red color and so the quick analysis tool is going to let me do this in literally five seconds so let me show you how. So I'm going to click on L2 which is the first value in the sales column. I'm going to do control shift down arrow key, which is going to highlight the whole column, then do control Q, and then click on this button that says color scales, and boom. I got the column, and this has the proper conditional formatting on it. It's really that easy. The fifth tool is called bookmarks, and this basically lets you jump to a certain cell in the Excel worksheet without having to scroll all the way down. So this tool is actually really easy to use. Let's say I want to jump straight into this average sales cell. So to do that, I just have to go over here, on the left hand corner or the left hand side and then I'm going to click on this name box and just call it average sales and you got to make sure that when you're naming stuff it doesn't have any special characters or any spaces or else you're going to run into an error and you got to also make sure that you click on enter after you name your name your bookmark because then when you scroll up all the way up here and then if I click on drop down arrow and then click on average sales, then it's gonna automatically take me to the cell. If I didn't click enter when I'm naming it, then it's gonna delete it and I have to start over again. Okay, let's say that for some reason, you realize you just wanna delete your bookmark that you made, then go to the formulas ribbon and then click on the name manager over here. And it's gonna give you the, it's gonna open a new window. And then over here, you can see that I've created the average sales bookmark just now, but let's say I wanna delete that. All I have to do is click on delete and it's going to ask me, you sure you want to delete it? I'm going to say okay. And that's basically it. Close it and we're good to go. All right, that's it for this video. If you want to see more Excel videos that I made, then make sure to check out this video over here. It's going to show you how to build Excel drop-down lists. So hopefully see you there and thanks for watching.